In Ibanda town, Canon Samuel Vishaka, aged 107 years, still walks and does a lot of things by himself. Until January this year, Canon Vishaka had been married to Naomi Vishaka for 69 years when she succumbed to COVID-19. He attributes his long life to revival, a renewalist movement within evangelical Protestantism that gained momentum in the 1930s. Vishaka got saved in his late 20s. The secret is one, if you get saved, you will surrender your life to him. So his power, he, he's, he, he's got power to keep you from sin again. The East African revival spread to the Anglican Church in Uganda from northeast Rwanda to Kenya and other neighboring countries, causing upheaval in the churches it influenced. Here in Uganda, the revival is believed to have started with a meeting between a missionary, Dr. Joe Church, and Simeon Nsibambi, who was later father to former Prime Minister Apollo Nsibambi. Together, they studied the scripture and prayed for the Holy Spirit to impact their lives in 1929. Dr. Church frequently met in Nsibambi and others in Kampala, with the church commuting between Kampala and Gahini in present-day Rwanda. After this, a new wave of Christianity spread like fire in these areas. It was on one such trip when Dr. Church's car broke down in Mbarara. He attended church in Ruharo Cathedral, where he was baffled by the faith of those he found there. Most had fled the persecution of Kabaka Mwanga in Buganda more than 20 years ago. When this Muzungu man saw it, he said, Can I suggest and we bring preachers here? Then the Muzungu man accepted it. He said, Okay, you bring them. When they preached, some young people, some people accepted Jesus as their Lord and Savior. After that incident, revival took root in Ankole with its fundamentals being repentance and confession of sin, restitution, walking in the light, brokenness, prayerfulness, fellowshipping, being grounded in the word of God, being a witness of Christ, and conventions and missions. These, according to Canon Bishaka, saved him and his family from living a wasteful life. <laughs> Hello, my friend. Bishaka is not alone. In Ruemirondo village, Kazo district, Ernest Butimbire and his wife Nora are believed to be the oldest living wedded couple in Church of Uganda. They attribute their long life to revival message. According to Church of Uganda leadership, the story of revival is best told through a couple like this, who through repentance of sins and acceptance of Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior have lived this long. Ernest Butimbire is 103 years and his wife Nora is 100 years and they've been faithfully married for 75 years. They say their journey to salvation wasn't easy as each of them faced opposition from their parents, frequently beaten and sent away from home for what was seen as disobedience. Mr. Butimbire's children think salvation changed their parents' mindset from the backward beliefs of nomadism to look at education and other forms of what is seen today as a civilized life. One of their children is Jotham Tumwesije, a retired justice of the Supreme Court. They were wanderers going to Mubende, going to Bremezi and nomads. When the revival came, they were advised, you need to stay in one place, don't keep moving. You need to get your children to school, uh, to put up churches and settle. That's how social economic transformation started. I asked Professor Johnny Raka, who is in his 80s, the connection between revival and long life. The statistical evidence that people who live a, style, a lifestyle similar to that of um, Christians born again uh, tend to live longer than the general public. For instance, they don't engage in alcohol. Alcohol is known to shorten lifespan. 
Smoking is known to uh, cause lung cancer and many others. And uh, even being peaceful, non-violent, they are not easily uh, angered to uh, take on their friends for a fight. But also uh, it could be attributed to powers above. And by this I mean uh, superhuman. Akani kiho mukufa Yandi nolo manawe This region's revival story can also be seen in the eyes of Patrick Bamurinda of Chiruhura district who, for 34 years, was a witch doctor, abandoning his line of faith to be a Christian recently. Kurugana narokoka ni ndevi niti nabitambaraji. Habukuba. Abana wanja wa yabarguari, wala shah, bakarguari mringo guastani, taba achirguara. It really shows a total change in the person. And it brings clearly the message of revival, the message of salvation. When I got saved, I was also a young man involved in sexual immorality. I was a teacher with a diploma in education, befriending the girls I was teaching in secondary school. And I turned around. When I got saved, I had been involved in theft of school property. After about three, four weeks, when a madman came near our church and he was talking, saying, you, the born again, you say you are born again, but there are things you stole, you've never taken them back. So I was helped by a madman to appreciate. Namugongo 2022 comes at a time when the Church of Uganda is slowly shifting from what elderly members like Bishaka and Butimbire call its core teaching to emphasizing exorcism and the prosperity gospel. As if that is exactly what Christ came for. Of course, God can bless you with riches. But life is not about riches per se. One day, each one of us shall leave this world. Now the question is, when you have left all that you considered to be important. What becomes of your soul? This year's Matters Day celebrations will feature retired Bishop Samson Mwaluda of Kenya, a man grounded in the East African revival gospel, with some asking if he will make the desired difference. Yes, I know it, it can. We shall not go out of it. Every activity that will be done, and even after uh, these uh, celebrations, I am telling you, we shall not remain the same. Those who will get opportunity to attend will be refreshed. Namugongo Anglican site is expected to host over 20,000 pilgrims to benefit from this year's message, but the rest will follow proceedings online and on television. Edward Mhumza, NTV.